Now, I'm going to be tying uh, a variant of the, the Zulu. Now, the, the black Zulu is just basically black with a red tail, silver rib, uh, black body. Now, there's obviously a, there's a blue Zulu, which is a really good fly. It's a, a favourite uh, traditional wet fly that I like to use, especially in bright days. I like the blue. Uh, other variants you can do is if you want the blue uh, or even the green. These are the these are peacock feathers, basically from the neck. This one's got obviously a bit more blue in it. This one, which you can use. But the problem with these feathers is they're normally quite large, so you have to tie them in a certain way to get in a smaller hook size to to get them to basically in proportion with the rest of the fly. Uh, the green one's very good. Uh, especially at the beginning of the season, uh, especially like beetle patterns or so on. You, you do get a lot of uh, beetle patterns in some of the hill locks. Now, it is a lock style fly. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the green, the green version, uh, just to show you what it's like. Now, thread is just a normal thread. It's the uni thread they own in black. Just run the wax through it to get it started. Now. Hook choice is up to yourself. You can use the bronze type hooks, so you can light wire hooks. Uh, this one here is the competition heavyweight size 12. Uh, this fly can be tied mainly 12s in the middle of the road, 14s, 12, uh, you can go 10s. It just depends on the, the type of the conditions. How, for a good wave, you can exaggerate the fly slightly. Now, I'm going to start at the eye, but I'm going to come down maybe 5 or 6 mil, come back up. Because the, the fibres are long, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie these in. Now what I may do, just to as a variant, just to show you, because I can't show both flies, I'm going to mix a bit of blue and green together. So if you can, what I do if I'm going to mix a fibre like this, I will sit and lay them on top of one another, and then just basically bring out the fibres together. I'll probably get maybe two flies out of this. So I'm lining them up and then I'll tear away the fibre. Just to see and then when they're laying on top of one another I can then blend them together. Just roll it within your fingers. Now you can see that some of the blue fibres are actually longer so what I'm going to do is bring them in. You don't want too many. Uh, you don't want to bulk up the fly too much. Just a, a colour. So, but this is basically the blend of the, the blue neck feather and the green peacock. So that the you get the best of both worlds. But that, see when you're tying your own flies you can experiment and do that. Now what I'm going to do here is tie it forward. So you're looking at least the length of the hook tied forward. But give yourself, as you can see I've taken it down about 5mm and brought it up to the point where I'm about a head length away from the eye. And then all I do is roll it round. It's quite simple. Just keep a hold of the ends and then tighten up. And you see how it's like a funnel really facing over the eye. We can then trim this at an angle which will give you a, a tapered cut. Now I'm just going to quickly run down and then come back up. Now I'm going to work with a softer hackle. I mean this is a, a hen. It's a dyed black hen. Now you can use a cock hackle down the body which will lift the fly a wee bit. In this case I want it to slightly bit more of a wet fly rather than a bob fly. So it will sit a wee bit deeper. Uh, easiest neatest way to tie it like is to actually again. What I'm going to do is I've got the hen hackle. Around about a length half fault. You want the fibre to be slightly about one and a quarter the, the gape. Around about that it's a bit fine. Now I'm looking at the front of the feather which I'm going to tie basically to curve up right next to where I tied in the peacock and then trim away the waist. At the same time I've got some red wool, which is just normal red wool. Now there's three strands in this. Now it's quite thin enough I could probably use it all but I'm just going to use two. So I'm going to remove one of the, the strands. Just do a little. It's quite easy just to pull it away and you're left with two strands of the red wool. The reason I like that, I prefer to tie it the way down, it's, it's easier and neater to do that. So we just catch it in. I'm opening it out, so I'm just taking the twist out the wheel as I wind. Now you could use other, 
you can use the, the glow bright flosses and stuff like that, but standard, just a normal nice bright red wool. The chances are this will probably be fluorescent as well. You're looking for around about a tail length, but say half the shank length, so there. And then I'm just going to fluff it up. And that basically gives you your tail. The rib is a flat silver tinsel, or you could use an oval or even a wire. This is a small flat silver tinsel. Just catch this on. It's just a stern will do. And then you've got a red dubbing. Eh, sorry, black dubbing. Uh, basically, you're looking for like an SLF or a seals fur or something like that. So I'm just going to lightly dub that on. Slide it up. Obviously I'm going to tie in the, the tinsel as I wind up. So I'm just going to work my way. Tightening up the dubbing as I wind when I need to. You can see the taper on the body there. Just working your way up to where you've got your hackle in, which is there. Get your hackle pliers. Just going to wind, do a turn at the top. And then I'm going to work my way down. Now if the tip of the hackle goes, don't worry, just go back. So I'm going to do a turn at the top, so, and then work my way down. Four to five times, or about that would be fine. Depends on the, how good the hackle is. Then we do a turn at the back, then we just leave your hackle pliers sitting. And then we rub our fly all the way up. Now, when we get to the top, what we're going to do here is draw back, keeping the tinsel obviously tight, draw back and then leave a space and do a turn on the head, right on at the head area there. And then, obviously, then come across the tinsel. Once you've caught it, don't pull the tinsel because the tinsel will cut your thread. Just let it go as soon as you've caught it. Make sure you've got two or three turns in there. Now I'm going to basically fold this back and then tie on the area where I wound the, the tinsel on. Just build up the head. And then you can just basically break away the tinsel. I've got our, the remains of our hackle at the back. Take it away. Just roll your fingers through. Just drawing back your peacock fibres and then all we have to do is whip finish. Now to get a nice shape in your in the fly because it is sitting slightly up. You can use a wee bit of technology and get the old hair dryer onto it. And this will basically will give you an idea what it looks like once it's been fished. You can see it's sitting a wee bit high, so what we do is just get the hair dryer, roll your fingers through it. Just get it to sit right. Just hold it for a second. And there you go, you've got your more fish like shape, or sorry, your natural shape in your fly. I say the tail, as much on as you like, I don't like them too, too, too thick. Uh, two strands is fine. Then all we have to do is just a wee bit of varnish. But you, you can see that shape, so it looks like it's been fished. Uh, and uh, that's just going to look like it in the water once it's been had a cast or two. Just a wee bit of varnish all the way around. And there we are. And that's your your Zulu with the it's a mix of the green and the the blue peacock. Uh, it gives you a nice. It's a good it's a good early season fly. It's a good season fly. It's wild brown trout you're looking for. This colour combination of blue, green, black, red, really you can't go far wrong. This would be good for sea trout as much as it would be for trout, and even the rainbows would have a certain have a go at this. So I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>